ITAR involves data release to international entities. Oh, interesting. Yeah, well, again, those of you familiar with the security of the software, and let's do a quick run through. It's encrypted before it's transferred at 256-bit AES. It's transferred over a 128-bit SSL, and then it's stored at an additional 1024-bit AES at a first data center, and then it's replicated to a geographically separate second data center. So hugely secure. Uh, there is no international release of information or release of information to anyone. And for HIPAA compliance, it's locked down even more so where there is no password recovery option, uh, which would also probably fall under ITAR. So if the password lost, the data is lost. Uh, well, it's still there, but it's just an encrypted mess and no one can get to it. We, don't, we won't store any way of um, recovering a password, things like that. But ITAR compliance, I'm not specifically sure how we uh, regulate that and how we address it. Oftentimes with these types of compliances, um, a majority of it has to do with local procedures and the business. So uh, it's rare that we are the cause of a violation of these security compliances. Good question about where the data centers are geographically. We have them in the US, Canada, the UK, Australia, Chennai, and Kiev. We have 10 total. It is correct. So it says it would be the responsibility of the individual company to ensure ITAR regulations are adhered to. Definitely. Right. All the data centers are tier three and four rated, so they all are, you know, they have the official, you know, rate configurations and all that and we do back them up to additional data centers. <laughs> Michael says he is sold an accounting firm. Tax time is coming and it's an easy sell. Definitely, and accounting firms, financial firms, and legal firms love the version history and uh, the fact that we don't charge for versioning and we don't ever purge different versions of files. So it's great. We actually even have an accounting firm who signed up as a partner with us and they offer a backup account to each one of their customers so they can back up their financial data so that when they come back the next year or the next quarter, whatever their schedule is, uh, they know that the information is going to be there and they don't have to worry about going back and redoing a lot of work. So definitely accounting firms are they're in the money, and you're and you're probably going to get a lot of you probably get a lot of reference uh, individual user customers from them as well. Uh, for more information about security compliance and what we have there, you can go to our our main website, and I'm going to go through this real quickly, and then we can uh, get into the product demo, and then we'll have some more questions. Uh, main website: sosonlinebackup.com. You scroll to the bottom, we have terms of use, privacy policy, and regulatory compliance. So here you can see our, our uptime and all the different compliances we adhere to. Also, what's great if you come to support uh, we have our knowledge base here, so for those of you asking about more information as far as the staging server setup, you can come here and you can search for it, whether it's do I need a staging server to use SOS server safe. And we put together just a, a real quick diagram to explain, you know, what you're doing. Uh, again, the staging machine doesn't need to be anything special. It's your choice, just a Windows-based machine. And this just depicts where you install each of the agents. So you have image creator, image stream, online file and folder backup, mobile applications. And this is just a backup flow. Uh, Michael asks, what's the promise uptime? 99.9. .9. You know, that's the, the tier rating. The difference is like one significant figure. So it goes from like if you're a tier 3, it's 99.9. .9, and if you're a tier 4, it's 99.99. .99. Uh, I, I 
don't quite remember, but it's uh, which which it is, but we have a combination of tier three and four rated data centers, which are the highest rating you can have. And ACOS, is that correct? Sorry if I'm butchering your name. Uh, ACOS is concerned with Canadian FIPA, which says that data must be stored on Canadian soil. Uh, can you have a guarantee? Yeah, when you come to the program, just ask the partner team to make sure that all your data is going to the Canadian data center. Uh, backup, the backup data won't leave that data center, but we do store backup account information. It could be anywhere in the world. So it's it could be in India, it could be in Ukraine, it could be in the UK. Um, but as far as your PIPA is, yeah, as long as it's not the data, yeah, that's what it is. And uh, it's good to see that that's changed to now allow for offsite backup. Because I know for in 2009 they rolled back offsite backup and they made that illegal. So actually, online backup violates FIPA or did for a number of years uh, because of some data security issue they had with a major a major healthcare provider in Canada, and they weren't allowed to have offsite backup. So. Uh, good, to, good to hear that that's back in, back, in, back in practice. It's one of those silly things where you know, governments really have good intentions, but they're just not that good at getting these types of things together. Okay, and if you have more information about the partner program, you can come here, and it goes through the web package, you know, what is it, et cetera, uh, how do you update it, so we'll send you some articles when we deliver. But let's get right into showing what the back end looks like. So when you come through our partner program, uh, we have a project where we're going to turn around, we're going to ask some information from you. You know, what do you want to call the product? Uh, what's the domain that we're going to use, the host, the web, the web package that we're going to be providing for you? Uh, those sorts of things. And then we're going, to, we're going to turn it around. So we just ask you for a couple pieces of information and go. When you log in, you're going to see something like this. So those of you who have been in our program for a while, uh, you'll be happy to see that delivery is a lot simpler. You have one login you need to keep track of, and this gives you keys to the kingdom. So this top left section involves cloud space information and will link right to your web package. So I add user, it's gonna pull me into the web package so I can sign up a user. Um, central management, this is for the Pulse server. So if I can go to central management, it's going to open up my Pulse server. And Pulse is going to look at all the machines and the accounts that Pulse finds based on where you installed the Pulse agent. And now that will be more clear in a bit. Uh, but you can see view all events. And this is from the application event logs. So again, those of you using other systems like ConnectWise, IT Control Suite, Spiceworks, uh, this is information that you could pull with those programs. What you can't get though is if you go to view backup sessions, is more specific details on what's happening. So this will actually go through and it's gonna scrape our log file and get you more specific information like files transferred, files not transferred, number of files that didn't change. So if I hit details, I can actually get an excerpt of the log file from the backup program so if I needed to see, you know, what's going on or something's wrong, I, I have it right here. So this gives you a little more information before you actually have to log in and start doing some troubleshooting if that's necessary at all. Uh, I have a couple questions here. Are both the local apps and the web dashboard available in Spanish language? No, Mario, it's not. Uh, and the the applications only support English versions of Windows. Uh, there are some workarounds that you can do to get it working on international versions of Windows, but the program won't uh, recognize a lot of foreign characters, and you'd have to install it. It has to do with the user script, but you can talk to support about that. Uh, if asked, will this training be available to go back through the partner knowledge base? 
We do have recordings every every Tuesday, Edith, we have a tech and admin training where we run through more specifically level one tech support, basic setup, best practices, uh, and admin functions. And again, that's part of our partner program is that we do have live webinars almost every day for our partners who are signed up with us to go through things like technical best practices and level one tech support training, as well as market positioning, you know, how to put together your managed service packages better and make money in this program. And it's good because they're, they're a lot smaller than these sessions. For these sessions, we have, you know, uh, you know, 50 people on the line. And these and the sessions for our partners, it's typically smaller, you know, a handful, uh, maybe five to ten people at most. And so it can be very specific as a discussion with you. And that's how we like to grow our program and how we identified why this program is going to be so awesome. And what and how we set our goals was by getting all the feedback from you, our partners. All right, so backup sessions. You can also control backup policies. So if you, a policy is a backup set and schedule. So once you've installed the backup program on a machine and you've installed Pulse on that machine, uh, you can choose to change the backup set if you, if you want. Aaron, I didn't see you on here. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, we can definitely catch up later on and uh, you know get you on the new program. So those of you who are in our pro partner program already, uh, we have a conversion sheet that our partner specialists will go through with you to take your current relationship and convert it to make sense in our new program. So it's it's not a an a, it's not apples to apples. So we got to get it together in the it's apples to oranges, and sorry if I sound like a high school math teacher when I say that, but we got to get the units right. Right now, we're adding server licenses and all the other fun stuff. So good to see you, Aaron. We'll we'll look forward to getting you on board. Okay, so specifically, what is the web package? Well, the web package it's a web application, and it allows you to really go to market and have kind of a product website. So you would link this in between your main site. And this allows you to, one, you have admin settings so you can set the basic SEO information there. Uh, gateway settings. So a lot of people, they wanted, you know, you always, you always ask for APIs. You know, what kind of provisioning APIs do you have? Well, we don't, we don't need you to have to do that in, uh, integration work anymore. Now you can just come in here and if you use authorize.net, PayPal Pro, PayPal Standard, you can just come in here, put in your, information and then you're ready to start accepting money. You can control the pricing and the plans that are available to your customers here. So you say edit and you can make them active or inactive meaning they'll show to your customers or not show. You can set the price, the title, so if you want to call this like um, Michael's awesome monthly package. There we go. And just submit. If I go to my sign up page on my website we now have Michael's awesome monthly three gig account. So it's it's that easy, and you just change what it is. Uh, we're going to give you the options for these plans. All you have to do is edit the price and the title, and whether it's active or not. Uh, if you go to this website, these prices are not recommended prices. They're all over the dish. If there's a, I think there's a, there's a twenty five hundred dollar forty gig account. You know, that's probably not what you're going to charge people. So go to home. Uh, also, when you have a new service, how do you contact people about it? You know, what's going on? Or if you're going to be launching managed services, how do you, well, you, what are you using as a mailer with your customers? Well, if you don't already have something, you have something now. So you have the mailer where you can say, okay, well, we need to add some subscribers. So you just import a list of subscribers then you can create a subscriber group. So if you're going to do an industry-specific campaign, you'd probably do a, a campaign group instead of a subscription group. You just upload their name and their email into the system. Then you can create different templates. And the template system is really simple. If you're familiar with Microsoft Office or if you're going to have someone do it in HTML, you can do that. 
uh, Alex and Steve both ask for recommended pricing to customers. Uh, definitely, we can touch on that a little bit. I want to get through some of this first, uh, but definitely we'll, we'll get into that. So we have, so you can go through and you can create different things. And then once you send the mail out, we, you know, what do you, how can you manage to the mailer? Is it successful or not? Well, you have these mailer statistics where it'll show you how many emails were sent, opened, your click-throughs, emails uh, unsubscribed from, and it gives you a, a nice rundown of what's going on. And you can look at the date, you can do it by specific subscriber groups or by a specific campaign or just global, which is what we're looking at now. So it's a really nice system to get out to your customers. It, it's really, you know, it speeds up your entry to market. Support tickets, so you can control different support statuses. Now that you have the ability to sign up customers and have people sign up online, you need a way to hear back from them if they have some trouble or need some help. So we have a support ticketing system. You can change the categories and support statuses to whatever you like. Uh, this isn't trying to compete with something like Kaseya or ConnectWise. So if you have an email address that automatically creates a ticket, then your admin section, just put that email address right here, and then you're good to go. CTCs and plans, again, a CTC is just an internal thing that we use to hold backup plan options for you. A CTC is unique to each partner. Uh, again, you just go to view plans, and that works. Uh, coupon code is really cool. So let's say you want to do a launch, an industry launch, uh, and you want to offer a discount or a one-time discount to somebody. Well, this lets you identify what's going on. So let's say free first year for the first sign-up or for one single person. You know, you can define it as a 100% discount.